should a $200 phone do? When Nokia Romania sent us over the Nokia 5.3 to review, that's what we tried to find out. And Nokia 5.3 definitely has its strong points, like pure, no bloatware Android that never disappoints and doesn't miss an update. To be honest, no matter how low the price is, a smartphone should behave like a smartphone, right? Notifications, apps, software gimmicks that are easy to add, those should run smoothly. And they do. This is one of the things I liked about this budget phone. Seamless user experience with all the Android services we expect, including Google Assistant, guys. One that's easy to call out, pushing this left button. Another thing that hit me was the weight of this phone. Not too light, so it didn't feel cheap, you know? On the textured back of our charcoal model, I found a fingerprint reader right under the camera, which worked fast and pretty flawless. As far as bezels go, I loved getting a Nokia device with slim bezels. About time, I'd say. But in some apps, you'll still notice a black band in the punch hole area. That's gonna take you back in time. A black upper band is old school, but the dark mode itself is very welcome. In fact, unlike with an iPhone, the Android on this Nokia enabled it automatically when battery saver was on. As we looked at the back of the phone, we couldn't help but ask ourselves, does a budget phone need so many cameras? Not that we didn't see this configuration before, but because we knew that after testing a similar budget phone, such a design was more for aesthetic reasons than performance. So, after testing all the lenses in various scenarios, we can say that they're not all that bad, even if some things are a lackluster even for a budget phone. The macro lens is, well, it's there. Is it good? Not really. How are the others? Well, in the last five years, I've come to love ultra-wide cameras, so I know that even flagship phones struggle with the quality of this lens. Even with this in mind, the 5-megapixel ultra-wide camera does not deliver to the point that it justifies its existence. The colors start to lose saturation and the overall image is not consistent with the main camera. In mixed lighting, it's struggling with the details in the shadows and the highlights. Dan, my colleague, just finished the game The Last of Us 2. And somehow the odds brought him to a place that could very well be used by HBO to film the TV series after the game. He tested the main camera here and found it okay. It's not mid-range quality, but it's fine for the price. In HDR, the images are more balanced, but uh, sharpening the HDR a little bit too much. In low light, the ISO goes way up. The noise is very visible, but in this grungy, moody setup, it looks kind of okay. Using the night mode helped a bit and raised the brightness, but it made everything look like a painting. In bright light, in a non-apocalyptic setup, the images taken with the main camera are okay. It's pretty hard at this price to find something much better. Here are some shots taken with the main wide camera. As you see, the colors are fine. In some bright parts, the highlights are clipped, but in general, the photos are good enough. The depth camera helps to create a decent out-of-focus background that worked good in the hairline area also. That said, please do check the shape of the bokeh. Somehow, without us noticing, most of the portrait shots had a snowflake as the blur shape. Turning down the strength of the blur is a must. The selfie camera could have been better if Nokia had given up the ultra-wide and the macro lens and had instead invested more in a capable selfie camera. The colors on this one are washed out. Photos look soft sometimes. We could prefer fewer cameras for a good selfie camera, especially in times like these, where daily video calls are a part of our lives. Hey, we want you to meet Zoom, our fluffiest crew member. On the video side, things look less than great on most budget smartphones. Nokia 5.3 has decent colors, but like all phones on this price category, Video stabilization is bad. Don't walk, don't run. Breathe slowly, move your hands carefully, be like a sniper while filming with this phone. I liked, however, the export frame feature, which let me save a frame of my choosing from the footage. Want to go a step further and trim your video for more on device edits? Prepare to wait. 
Saving the video after trimming took longer than I'd like in a smartphone. But when all was said and done, I got at least a couple of shots and a video or two for social media. Finally, we went crazy and tested this $200 phone's gaming abilities. Now, keep in mind that just a few flagships out there like Asus ROG, Nubia Red Magic, Black Shark are prepared to handle racing, shooters and action games. So I didn't have high hopes for the Nokia 5.3. As expected, with a 665 Snapdragon and a 6GB of RAM and no cooling system, it got hot fast. And it did stutter, especially while playing Asphalt 9, so you might want to go easy on this phone where games are concerned. The experience wouldn't have been so bad, though, if the sound wasn't muffled almost all the time. And it wasn't Nokia's fault, precisely. I had covered the bottom speaker in landscape mode. It's gonna happen to you, too. Why? Because there's only one bottom speaker. Good news is the battery didn't die mid-game. In a 40-minute gaming session, I saw a 10% drop with maximum brightness on. And in casual use, it lasted around three days on a full charge. So guys, what should an under $200 Nokia 5.3 do? Take decent photos, offer a great UX, last more than a day and have accurate biometric security. Can you think of anything else? Let us know and for more videos like this, show us some love by clicking subscribe and hitting the bell button. Until the next one!